Hello my friends, welcome back. It's currently Friday afternoon. I've just made myself a coffee. I'm just sitting on the couch. I have a pretty chill afternoon. And I was like, you know what? Let's start a new reading vlog. So I saw Bestie Sarah do this kind of recently, maybe a few weeks ago now, but she just vlogged for like a weekish and just kind of showed what she read and obviously talked about what she read. And I just really enjoyed it because it's not necessarily like a 24 hour readathon or anything super crazy challenging. It's very just like chill. <laughs> and that just sounded really appealing to me. So I thought I would just start it off, let you guys know what I'm reading and we'll just see what I read over the next few days. I honestly have barely read this week. I haven't finished any books this week. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I've just been kind of busy. So I don't really have many plans over the weekend and I'm hoping I can get a Bit more reading done because I've just really missed sitting down and getting lost in a book. But this is what I'm currently reading right now. This is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. And like I said, I've been reading this all week, just very slowly. I think my body has also been fighting off being sick because usually I do a lot of reading in the evenings when I go to bed. Like I'll hop into bed at like eight and then I usually read for like an hour and a half, sometimes more. And recently I've been getting to bed and I've been falling asleep at like 8.20 because my body is just so tired. And at first I was like, oh, maybe just because I've had a busy week, but I don't think that's the case. I think my body has been fighting off just like the flu or a cold or something along those lines. But because of that, I've just been reading this book so slowly and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not loving it, which is really sad because I loved When in Rome, which is the book that comes before this. Technically, When in Rome and Practice Makes Perfect are interconnected standalones and you probably don't technically have to read When in Rome first, but I would highly, highly recommend it because you really get some good context to the small town because it is small town romance and also just the characters in general. General. And the characters in the first one definitely show up in the second one, so it's good to have that background knowledge. But yeah, I'm currently at page 201, chapter 25, so I have like 130 pages left, I think. And right now it's not necessarily bad, it's just like pretty meh. And I think that's also why I'm reading it slow because I'm just like not excited to pick it up. But I'm going to try and sit down with my coffee now and just kind of smash some of this out. Because the other book that I'm reading currently is Chain of Iron. And I'm loving Chain of Iron. And so I think once I'm done with that, I'm probably just going to binge Chain of Iron because it's just, that is where my attention lies. But I really just want to get this done because I, <laughs> I'm just, I'm not looking forward to it. So I almost just want to get it over and done with so I can kind of close that chapter and move on to something else. Hopefully it gets a bit better and I might change my mind. Right now it's like a three star, three and a half star read. Not bad, just definitely not as good as When in Rome to me personally. Hey guys, it is Saturday night and I realized that I haven't updated you all day and I definitely have updates. So I did end up finishing Practice Makes Perfect last night. I finished it before I fell asleep and it wasn't like absolutely terrible, but it definitely wasn't great. It just didn't live up to When in Rome, in my opinion. Like When in Rome to me was just so much better than this, which is just, I just find it also interesting because obviously same author, same small town. These characters were literally in the first book and the premise of this book is perfect to me. Like wholesome, sweet, florist girl falls in love with bodyguard tattoo boy. Like it just sounds like such a fun romance and it's small town. I love small town. Like the premise is fantastic, but it just wasn't it for me. And I don't know exactly why. I do think it was just really cringy, which is weird because the first one I thought was like the perfect rom-com, like a bit cheesy, but in a good way. And this one was like cheesy, but in a terrible way, in my opinion. Oh, it makes me so sad, but it's also mind blowing because I was literally just scrolling through Bookstagram and so many people have said they didn't like when in Rome But they love this or they love when in Rome But they didn't love this or they love both of them or they didn't like either of them It feels like this series seems to be quite dividing in terms of people's opinion on it Which I'm just fascinated by I guess that can happen a lot of the time But I just feel like specifically I've just seen so many different opinions on these books and I'm 
shocked <sighs> but for me i'm definitely in the camp of loved when in rome this fell flat for me i wonder what i would have thought if i read this book and didn't have any like expectation from reading when in rome like if i read this book without having read when in rome i wonder what i would have thought because i obviously went in with very high expectations after i gave five stars to when in rome so i don't know i'm really sad about it but it is what it is i also posted on my instagram story last night being like i'm not loving this book and i'm really sad about it it's just like not it and the amount of people that replied to my story being like i felt the exact same i was like shocked by it. there were so many of you guys so it's not just me but i also know there are people out there that loved it so i don't know it's just crazy to me i wish i loved it but i i just didn't it was like three stars there were still parts of it that i liked i liked the town like the small town aspect i liked some of the side characters i liked bits of it but overall it was just like three stars bit cringy bit like cartoony not in a good way i also was really sad that it was like wholesome girl but we need to like corrupt her like why why can't she just be wholesome and that could be that, you know? Anyway, moving on, I started two new books today. These are the two I started. I actually first started this one. This is called This Time It's Real and this is a YA romance. And at first I was like, maybe I just need like an easy YA romance where I don't really have to think about it. So I started this. I read the first like two chapters, one chapter, first like 25 pages. And I was like, oh, it's good. I'm just like not feeling like reading a romance right now, I think. I think this has put me in like a romance slump. I mean, it's been a day, so we'll see what that turns into, but I just wasn't feeling this but I don't think it's the book I think it's just like my mood so I decided to pick up one for my enemy and I'm now a hundred pages into this and I am really enjoying it so I'll continue to update my thoughts on this but I'm gonna go have a shower do some cleaning and I'll talk to you guys maybe tomorrow maybe later tonight we'll see how we go Good morning guys, it is Sunday. Sunday morning, what is the time? 8 a.m. I've just been chilling this morning, but I'm in the mood to do some reorganizing. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna reorganize a few shelves on my bookshelf. I only wanna move around a couple shelves. So it's not like a full reorganization, but I thought it would be fun to film. Basically, I think I wanna have like a favorite books shelf. I'm thinking this one, I might turn into my favorite books shelf. This is currently where I have my romance series. So I wanna have Magnolia Parks on here. I I do want to have my Edited Calloway books on there, but I don't think I'm going to have enough room because they'll literally take up half the shelf. I want to move my Emily Henry books down there, my Archer's Voice books, and we'll kind of just see what else goes on there, to be honest. But I thought I'd film it for you guys. It probably won't be any of my fantasy books, just my favorite romance, probably. <laughs> I think I'm happy with the little bit of reorganizing that I did. So I moved my thrillers to this shelf. They were up here. I moved them to over here, which now means this whole side is romance. And up here we have thrillers and then just fantasy, which kind of just feels right in my brain. I made my favorite shelf. So I have my M. Hen books my two copies of Archer's Voice. If you're wondering why I have two, this is the one that I borrow out to friends and this is my copy. <laughs> and I feel like you can really tell the difference, but I love that this one is super well loved. Then of course I have my Magnolia Parks books and then there's just a few other books that I really love. So Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones, my favorite Abby Jimenez books. These aren't all of her books, but these are my favorites by her. And then we have Better Than The Movies. And honestly, I might switch this out, like these books out. I think I'll always have Magnolia Parks, Archer's Voice and Happy Place there, but the other ones might change a little bit we'll see and then this was where my romance series were so i moved them up here because i moved the thrillers over so i mean these technically aren't series these are my francine rivers books and then these are my romance series so i tried to organize it with jenny hahn here then i have my dreamland billionaires i'm missing one because i have lent it out to a friend and then i have my small town romance series. I know that Chestnut Springs is not technically small town, but it's still the same vibe, so I don't care. <laughs> That's what the shelves are looking like now. My pride and joy. I love these so much. It's now a little bit later and I have a bit of a reading update, so I have just continued to read One for My Enemy most of the morning, honestly. Last night, before I fell asleep, I got up to page 170-ish, so like this much, and then obviously I've been reading this morning and now I'm up to page 240. So I'm over halfway now and part of me is like, maybe I could finish this today i don't know for sure but maybe 
I definitely think I'll get some more reading done throughout the day. And right now I am really enjoying this. I don't think I really explained what this book is about. So I think the best way to describe this would be urban fantasy. So it's set in New York City, like current times. And this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. And I feel like the Romeo and Juliet situation is just so intriguing. Basically this story is about two families. I feel like it's gonna sound like I'm describing the plot of Romeo and Juliet, but bear with me. Um, it's about two different families. I'm gonna get the names wrong. We have the Antonovas and the Fedorovs. I could be pronouncing them wrong, but the Fedorovs are a dad and three sons. And then the Antonovas is a mum and six daughters, seven daughters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven daughters. And it's honestly so hard to explain the situation between the families because it is very layered and complex and not complex in the way that it's hard to understand, but complex in the way that there's a lot of depth to it and they have a lot of history. So the current family, obviously, like the children in each family have their own situations going on and their own like links to each other like there might have been a romance between one of the sons and then one of the daughters and the other family and something might have happened there but there's also history that goes back further than that with the dad of the boys and the mum of the girls it's just so fascinating and I'm loving the like family dynamics but also just like this I don't know what you would call it just this tension between the families and the, all of the stories and all of the history behind why they don't like each other I find that fascinating and and also just the elements of magic is very interesting. So the girls, the Antonovas, are witches and their whole magic situation is very interesting. But yeah, I just, I'm really, really enjoying that aspect of it. I will say there is, there are actually multiple romance subplots, I guess you could say. But I would say like the main one, I'm not really convinced by it. It was a bit insta-lovey, but then I was also thinking about Romeo and Juliet and I was like, if they are supposed to represent Romeo and Juliet, they also fell in love so quickly. Like actual Romeo and Juliet did and obviously it's that like wild all consuming love where it's like I can't live without you kind of vibe so I can understand why it might come across as insta love because that's like the same as the original story and this is a reimagining so like I kind of see that but I just like hate insta love so I guess you're supposed to like root for these main characters to be together but I'm just kind of like you've known each other for two seconds like chill out but it is still just very entertaining and the romance I would say like yes it's obviously a big part of the plot but I would say like the family politics and like the tension between the two families is really the most interesting situation going on. Also, the writing is beautiful. I'm really, really loving the writing. It just feels very magical and um, not lyrical, poetic a little bit, I guess, at some points. It kind of feels a bit like V.E. Schwab writing to me, I think. But yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it and I'm excited to continue reading. I think maybe I'm just in a fantasy mood right now because this is just intriguing me so much more than any romance that I have on my TBR. But I need to go do some work, so I'm going to put it down for a bit but I'll update you if I get any more reading done. Wait, try turning off your light. Oh no, too dark. You guys are just gonna have to deal with the awful lighting. I promise I'm not bald. I have a bun back here somewhere. It is now 8.15 p.m. I'm in bed, obviously, and I am reading. I really don't know if I'm gonna finish this today. I obviously don't have, like, too much left, but I do still have a decent chunk, and I've been feeling kind of sick today, so I have a feeling I'm gonna fall asleep very quickly. But I could be wrong. We'll see how we go. I'm just gonna try and read as much as I can before I fall asleep, but I'm at page 330, and it's just over 400 pages, so I'm not really sure how we're gonna go. I feel like I still have kind of the same thoughts that I did earlier. I think it's a super intriguing story. I love the family dynamics and the, just like the tension and the, I don't know, I want to find a better word, but I can't think of any right now. I guess just the resentment that the families have toward each other. I'm just finding that part still super interesting. And I don't know how to explain it without obviously ruining it, but I guess maybe I could say that some people have potentially changed sides a little bit, their loyalties may have changed a little bit from the beginning of the book which is very interesting so i'm gonna keep reading this still really really enjoying and hopefully i'll enjoy the last like 70 pages or so i was about to say good morning but it's not really morning it's like 1 p.m but 
just me and my midday coffee and I thought I'd give you guys a little update. So last night I did end up finishing One for My Enemy by Olivia Blake and I will say I'm kind of annoyed because like I mentioned to you guys, I was really tired last night. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this. I feel like I'm going to fall asleep and probably the last like 30 pages of this especially, I was struggling to stay awake but I was like, there is no way I'm not going to finish this 30 pages before I go to sleep. So I kept reading and by the last page I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm about to pass out. Turned over, put my book on my bed side table turned out my lamp lay down to go to sleep lay awake for an hour someone explain that to me are you are you joking like what was my brain doing i was dead set falling asleep finishing this and then as soon as i like lay down to go to bed brain was like actually no we're gonna stay awake and think of everything we possibly can for the next hour so that was really fun but i'm glad i was able to finish it and i was also very intrigued to see how this was gonna end because as i mentioned earlier this is a romeo and Juliet. Jelly, Juliet. That is the second time I've done that when talking about this book, not in this vlog. In one of my recent videos, I said Romeo and Juliet, and I just went and said it again. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling, and we all know the ending of Romeo and Juliet. So I was very intrigued to see if the author was going to follow that plot line or switch it up, because in a retelling or a reimagining, there is definitely some creative license going on. And obviously, I'm not going to tell you what happens in the end, but I was very satisfied by the ending of this book. I feel like overall throughout the entire book, Olivia Blake did a very good job at incorporating Romeo and Juliet aspects while still keeping it very fresh and new. It didn't feel like I was reading something that I've already read. So overall, I really, really enjoyed this. I would give it probably a 4.25 maybe. It wasn't a five star, but it was thoroughly entertaining. I feel like the romance wasn't amazing to me, but I really, really loved the writing and I really, really loved the family dynamics and the tension between the two families. So Overall, definitely recommend. And it's a standalone, a fantasy standalone. And I feel like fantasy standalones, I was going to say are a little less common. I'm not actually sure if they're a little less common, but I don't read that many of them. So I don't have a lot of fantasy standalone recommendations, but I'll have to add this to the list because it was really good. I haven't read anything yet today and I don't know what I'm going to read. I'm going to read one of these two. I'm either going to read Chain of Iron or This Time It's Real. I feel like I'm still not in a huge romance mood, but I might like try and read a chapter of this and see if I'm vibing it and if not maybe I'll read Chain of Iron but I already know that I'm gonna love Chain of Iron I just part of me is like I kind of want to switch it up but I'm also like do I no I don't know we'll see what I get up to reading update it is now like 10 past 4 so it's been a few hours since I last talked to you and I just made it to chapter 14 which is page 306 I think when I checked in with you guys I was at around chapter 7 so I'm honestly very happy with the progress that I've made I was really hoping I'd at least get to the halfway mark I'm not quite there yet but I'm sure I'll read a little bit more this afternoon this evening I am thinking of picking something else up probably tonight just to switch things up because I have genuinely been reading this for hours and I'm just feeling like as much as I'm really really enjoying it I am kind of wanting to switch things up just to keep myself very interested because I don't want to like burn myself out reading one book for like six hours I just don't think that typically works for me unless I'm like completely consumed by the story and I just want to like binge it all but I'm not really feeling like that with this book doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it because I really am. I don't even know what to tell you about this book. This is the second book in the Last Hours series, so I obviously can't really explain the plot of this book because it would spoil what happens in the first book, but I will say I loved how the first book ended. It set up the second book very well, and I have been really enjoying how that ending and that like, I don't know if plot twist is the right word, but just like the direction that the plot took at the end of the first book, I'm really enjoying how that's being such a big plot point of the second book. I also just love all of our characters so much in this series. I especially love Lucy. I think her story is just very intriguing and I'm very interested to see where her story goes. Like I really don't know how it's going to work because she's in a bit of a sticky situation because what she wants to happen is pretty impossible in the situation that she's currently in. As for Cordelia, I also really, really like Cordelia and I kind of just feel bad for her in her romantic endeavors. And I have a feeling it's probably just going to get more complicated as the story progresses because that is just how Cassandra Clare likes to take things. She also really likes love triangles. So I'm a little scared to see how Cordelia's romance plot 
continues but I just can't get over the setting and the way these characters talk because if you don't know this is set in London in the Victorian era and so the way they talk is just so eloquent and proper and I don't know if prestigious is the right word but they just are so formal in the way that they speak and act and the things that are like scandalous is like seeing a girl with her hair down and it's just so crazy to think the difference in society from then to now and also the wit and the humor in this book is just so good it's just like very subtle but I love it so definitely really enjoying this series as a whole I honestly don't think I'm gonna finish this book in this reading vlog because I do want to read other books so I can't like devote all of my time to this but I'm enjoying kind of reading it more slowly I've honestly been reading it for like a week before this as well but I've definitely read the biggest chunk today every day before this I've probably only read a chapter if I've picked this book up but yeah I'm really enjoying reading it more slowly and just taking it all in but that's a little update I think I'm honestly gonna go have a shower wash my hair because I have slicked it back for the past few days which I have been enjoying but it is feeling quite stiff I just need to fully wash it and then after that I'll probably cook dinner so I'll update you if I do any more reading but there's your update for now it is now 8 30 I'm obviously in bed and I did end up starting a new book this afternoon this evening this is what I ended up picking up this is Heartbreak House Share by Emily Merrill this is on my June TBR I was considering picking up the YA romance that I had picked up I don't know a couple days ago but I just I don't know wasn't in the mood for it and I looked at my TBR card and I was like what is calling my name this is what was calling my name. I think this does have romance in it, but I think it is also just like general fiction. According to the barcode, it is romance, but I just have a feeling it's going to be a lot more about friendship and growing up and that sort of thing, as well as romance. And so far, I've only read 50 pages, but I am loving the writing. I'm loving the setting. I'm loving how the story is going so far. It starts off with our main character. She has just gotten dumped like two weeks previously by her boyfriend that she's been with for a couple of years now and she was living with him but they have broken up and it's like not like an awful awful breakup but it's definitely not like great you know like she's pretty sad about it but because they were living together they both decided to move out and so she has moved into a house share situation with three other girls and I mean I've only gotten to the point where she's been there for a couple of days but I'm hoping there's a really beautiful like found family that forms in this book but yeah I really like the writing it's set in London and that automatically makes it feel crazy to me I don't know why but any book set in England feels crazy to me so I'm excited to continue reading this but so far so good Hello friends, another day, another reading update. I have obviously read a little bit more of Heartbreak House Share. I just reached page 150 and I am enjoying this so much. It is just such a pleasure to read. It's fun, it's cute, it's very like feel good and yeah. I'm just loving it. I kind of explained what it was about yesterday, but since then the plot has obviously developed and this is not a spoiler or anything, but I wanted to mention it because I feel like it might entice a few people. It might be something that people want to read, but like I mentioned, our main character recently went through a breakup. She moved into a share house with a bunch of other girls and as a job, she works at a magazine and I won't give you every single detail, but basically to help her kind of pick up her life after her breakup, help herself get out of her comfort zone, make the most of her 20s, she creates a thing called a 20s list which is basically just a list of things that she wants to do in her 20s. She wrote this list and obviously I'm assuming a lot of the book will be about completing this list. I also think there's going to be a bit of a fake dating trope in this coming up and I am just having so much fun with this. There's a lot of talk about friendship and just being in your 20s not knowing what you're doing but just like trying your best and it's just so fun. I feel like it's not necessarily action-packed like it's not like there's crazy things happening all the time but it just feels very comforting and like hearted but still has like a decent amount of depth to it like I don't know it's just the perfect combination of a lot of things so really enjoying this one I think I'm gonna put it down for a bit because I have some other things I need to get done but I honestly picked this up on a whim when I was in Dimmix I don't know a month or two ago just because I liked the cover I hadn't heard anyone talk about it and so far it has been a great decision I need to do that more often because if I can find books like this it's so worth it. Hello my friends, it is actually like 7 p.m. and I really planned on reading a lot today and I did not. And now it's time to end this video and I feel very like weird about it because I'm like 
halfway through so many books and I tend to prefer to finish books at the end of the vlog or like by the end of the vlog just so it feels complete and I'm not finished with like any books right now so I'm just gonna give you a final little update give you my final thoughts tell you what I have read since I last talked to you so I don't know if I read any more of this in the last 24 hours but I think I read more since I updated you about it but I'm up to page 370 which is over halfway so that's exciting and I think I'll honestly finish this within the next 24 to 48 hours loving this not really any updates in terms of like my thoughts on it but just really thoroughly enjoying it i also read another like 50 pages of this so i'm now on page 209 so i'm also a little over halfway through heartbreak house share and again really enjoying it don't really have too many more updates about this i have reached the like fake dating element of this book and i'm really really enjoying it i really like the guy who she is fake dating and i think the situation that she's in that has like caused the fake dating is weirdly believable. Maybe some of you will read this and be like, that's not actually believable, but I don't know. I feel like this could potentially happen in the real world, which for some reason makes me like it even more. But yeah, this is just a great vibe so far. Very wholesome, very fun. Although I found it in the romance section of Dimmix, I would argue that to me, it feels much more like a general fiction with a romance subplot, which I really, really enjoy. But I just feel like the romance is definitely not the main thing. I feel like the romance wasn't even introduced. I mean, I'm at page 200 and so far she's just fake dating this guy. She doesn't even have feelings for him, you know? So I wouldn't say it's the main plot, but I'm really enjoying it as a side plot. And I'm really enjoying that the main plot is more focused on our main character, just working out who she is and what she wants after a long-term relationship breakup. And also just finding joy in her work and her friendships that she's making and like playing tennis, just like I don't know, it just feels very real and I am thoroughly enjoying. So obviously I'm gonna continue reading that over the next two days and probably finish that soon as well. And then last night when I hopped into bed, I kind of just felt like reading my Kindle, which I honestly haven't read a lot of my Kindle in the past month or so. I don't know, I go through phases where I read a lot of my Kindle and then not as much and that's so fine. But I decided to pick up the Eden's Legacy story. I'm not sure if that's the exact name, but it's basically a little novella that's part of the Eden's world. If you don't know, the Eden's is a small town romance series by Dan Stephanie Perry and this series centers around a family called the Edens and there are six siblings in this family and each sibling gets their own little romance and they're pretty much all set in Quincy, Montana and it's just a really fun, very easy read like all of the books are in the series. I really enjoy them and there's a little short story slash novella that I just haven't got to yet and it's about the parents of those siblings so it's very short and quick but I really enjoyed that too. I literally started and finished it last night in like probably 30 minutes or less. I don't actually know how long it took me but it was just yeah very quick but it was just nice to see a little bit more of the parent storyline and even just get to know their personalities a little bit more especially like from when they were younger so that was fun and then I decided that I wanted to keep reading on my kindle so I decided to download Reckless by Elsie Silver because this came out really recently and as you guys know I've read all of the other books in the Chestnut Springs series this is the fourth book it's centered around Winter and Theo and Winter is very grumpy and Theo is like the class clown kind of vibe so I think it'll be a really interesting story. I'm only 10% of the way through this, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think I'm going to really enjoy it. So I'm excited to read this. And also, someone please explain to me why it would cost me $41 to get the physical copy of this book that matches the rest of my editions. I do have like the discreet slash special edition covers, but I did not pay $41 for my other ones. So I'm hoping it might drop in price over the next few months or weeks. And until then, I will be settling for the Kindle version, which I'm not mad about. But that's my update. I'm halfway through this halfway through this 10% of the way through this finish a short story like it's just very random we obviously finished practice makes perfect is that the only book we finished in this video oh no we also read one for my enemy which was fun I'm a very chaotic reader and hopefully this video kind of gave you some insight to that because like I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog I just thought it would be fun to take you along with me for a week of reading just to like see what I realistically read in a week what I tend to pick up how many books I read at once because I am definitely a multiple books girly I think I just have such a chaotic brain that it just really works for me I don't think there's anything wrong with reading multiple books at once but I also don't think there's anything wrong if you just read one book at once I don't think there's a better way to do it. I don't think I necessarily read like faster reading multiple books. I think it just keeps me interested and I'm just always reading something because I always have something I'm in the mood for. So it just works well for me. But I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I feel like it was a bit random, but I had a lot of fun filming it. And I am going to go have a shower, finish editing this video and hopefully get some reading done before bed. But I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.